Hey what's up guys, welcome to Cert Bros. In this video we're going to be looking at Multi-Area OSPF. Okay, so Multi-Area OSPF. This is the expansion to the Single Area OSPF video. If you haven't watched that video and you're not familiar with OSPF, then you're in the wrong place. Go check that video out, give it a like, leave a little comment and come back when you're done. Okay, so if you have watched that video, then our little 5 router network should look familiar. You will also know that OSPF floods link state information to all neighboring routers using LSAs. Each router then takes those LSAs and builds a link state database. They then run the SPF algorithm. Finally, the routers choose their best routes based on the route cost. And that's fine in our teeny tiny network, but let's think bigger. Imagine you have a hundred, or five hundred, or even a thousand routers. Now first of all, it's highly unlikely your network will look like this. But let's just take a second to admire the beautiful symmetry of this network. Okay, so now we've taken that in, what do you think will happen when using single area OSPF in this massive network? Well, we're going to run into a few problems. Problem number one, the link state database will be huge. Every router will have a copy of the same LSDB filled with information about every router and every link within the entire network. Probably information that it doesn't even really care about. All of this information can even start to fill up the disk space. Problem number two, not only will the database be huge, so will the routing table. With a route to each subnet, this means every time a packet comes in, your routers may need to search through hundreds or even thousands of routes before it finds the right one. This will also impact the disk space and even the processing power of the router itself. Issue number three. Updates everywhere. Anytime a link or router is changed, disabled or enabled, cables are pulled out, cables are plugged in, updates are flooded throughout the entire network. Not only that, but each router will have to rerun the SPF algorithm every time an update is sent. Introducing OSPF multi areas, the solution to all of our OSPF problems. Using multi-area OSPF will reduce the size of our link state database, summarize our routing tables, and it will contain update messages to a single area. The price we pay for all this OSPF goodness, complexity, and a little extra time. Let's take a closer look at how this actually works. But first, let's mix it up a little and use a brand new network diagram. So we're going to split these routers into areas. An area is simply a group of routers. Now it goes without saying, this is a very simple 5 router network, so no need for multi areas. However, for the sake of simplicity, imagine each area containing multiple routers. Generally speaking, it's recommended to have less than 50 routers in an area, but there's no real hard limit. It all really depends on the processing power of your routers. When it comes to designing your OSPF areas, there's some planning that needs to be done. First of all, you need to start with area zero. This is known as the backbone area. Every other area must join to the backbone area. Secondly, to benefit from OSPF areas, you need to plan your subnetting. As you can see here, area one has all of the 10 dot something networks and area two has all of the 172.16 something networks. This really is the key to successful OSPF areas. Let's take a look at how we can summarize our routes. Router two and router three are known as area border routers or ABRs. These are special routers that have interfaces in two or more areas. This gives them the power to summarize routes from each area. For example, router 2 
can take all of the 10.0 something networks and say, hey, any packets to the 10.0.0.0 network, send them my way. Router 3 also says any traffic for the 172.16.0.0, leave it to me. And they both send a single route to area 0. Router 2 and Router 3 will also summarize Area 0 subnet to Area 1 and 2. This route summarization instantly wipes out all of our OSPF problems. The routing table is drastically reduced because huge subnet chunks are summarized into a single route. As a result of this, there are far less LSAs flying around, reducing the size of the LSDBs. The updates are usually contained within their own areas as well. For example, router 1 doesn't care if the 172.16.5.0 link goes down. All it knows is router 3 has all of the 172.16 subnets. So it just sends it over and lets router 3 deal with it. This stops the need to run SPF every time a change occurs, unless that change happens within the router's own area. The exception to this would be if the ABR interface went down itself. It would then need to tell the other areas that something terrible has gone wrong. So after some careful planning and a little extra time, we now have a scalable OSPF network using multiple areas. Before finishing, we've already looked at ABRs, but there are some others. Backbone routers. These are all routers that are in or partially in the backbone area. So in this case, router 1, router 2, and router 3 are backbone routers. Area border routers. We've already looked at these, and they are routers that connect to more than one area. Router 2 and router 3 are ABR routers. Internal routers. These are all routers within a single area, but not the backbone area. Router 4 and router 5 are known as internal routers. Lastly, Autonomous System Boundary Router, ASBR. These are routers that connect to other non-OSPF routing protocols, such as BGP or EIGRP. For example, this may be your edge router connecting to the public internet or another autonomous system network. That's it for multi-area OSPF. With a bit of planning and some extra time, you really can scale up OSPF far and wide. If you like this video, remember to like, comment and subscribe. It really does keep these videos coming. Thank you for watching.